Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habitatillah The question was asked What advice would you give someone who decided to seriously seek knowledge at an older age? 20 plus I don't see being 20 plus being much older Allah <laughs> mustahan uh, Book recommendation, primary focus, general advice, etc. I would probably say the same as I've said uh, countless times uh, regarding seeking advice. I think the biggest issue when, two issues when being a bit older or much older that a person faces, number one, uh, responsibility. If you're married and you have children, obviously you can't do what a single person can do as far as your traveling. Uh, and if you have a wife that isn't on the same page as you, then those things can be challenges to face when trying to go abroad and seek knowledge or <clears throat> seeking knowledge in general. Uh, another point is, so, so it's first looking at your responsibilities, what you're able to uh, put into seeking knowledge. The second point is regarding seeking knowledge. Uh, and a possible hindrance is obviously when you're younger, it is easier to memorize and so forth. But as the Arabs say, Menjidda Wajid, whoever uh, strives, they will gain a positive uh, result. So by putting in positive energy, you will receive a positive result, meaning that if you strive hard, you will gain success, you will gain something. And even for the person who's not good at memorizing, I, and Ben Othamin mentions this, and he got this advice from his Sheikh, Imam Asa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, that even just Kethra to Kira'ah, by reading and reading a lot of those books, it becomes as if you're memorizing. So this is one thing I would give anybody as general advice who finds it difficult to memorize, that being, Seeking knowledge is, it requires patience because when you think about the Talib al-Ilm, at least what I've witnessed, especially being in Yemen and also in Saudi Arabia amongst the students in Jama Islamiyah, and those ones that were very serious, that were just, you know, in times when other people want to enjoy their time, those people are isolated in the masjid reading reading Messiah and memorizing because you don't memorize and you don't gain those Messiah by wasting time. So I personally myself haven't really what I would consider sought knowledge in probably some years in fact. I would say now I just read and and I teach what I do on the YouTube. This helps me keep some knowledge fresh and gives me a chance to go back and do research but really sitting and seeking knowledge, I can say personally, I haven't done that in years. And, and it shows because I've forgotten so much. So my point is, is that to really seek knowledge, it requires sacrificing time and, and putting the effort and the energy into it. So my advice is whatever your age is and whatever you're, wherever you are striving to seek knowledge, that you put that, it's going to require uh, real sacrifice in your time and in your energy. And as Imam Mukbil, he mentioned, which is also a statement of the, the Salaf, but that's where I first heard it from, and he's mentioned it countless on his tapes and stuff like this as well. And he said, uh, That knowledge does not come from being comfortable in one's body. So meaning that you can't just lay and sleep and think that you're going, you know, the ones who really gain that knowledge, and you can see this with some of the ulama too, those are the ones they just, they sacrificed and they spent their time and energy striving uh, to, uh, to seek knowledge. So my advice would be, learn as much as you can of the Quran. Uh, also, uh, you know, learn as much as you can, you know, seek knowledge with the learning the Arabic language because that's a tool that opens up this whole world. This is a whole world that you can't even really uh, begin to uh, scratch the surface in English or French or German or Italian or whatever, uh, or even Somali or what have you, other Muslim languages, if you will, that 
you know, the translation compared to going to these sources, these books, it just opens up a, an infinite amount of knowledge. So it's very important, the Arabic language, focusing on that, focusing on uh, memorizing what you can of the Quran, and then other books, basic books in books in Aqidah, listen to lessons and lectures in English uh, that are Aqidah based to keep your Aqidah and Iman going while you're on that journey to learn Arabic and, 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 and so forth. And my Sheikh told me when I first came to Saudi Arabia, he mentioned to me when I was in Hail, Saudi Arabia, you know, there was no places to study Arabic. I wanted to improve my Arabic. I could speak, but I was rough in speaking. Uh, you know, my understanding was so-so. And he said, he told me, I said, Sheikh, you know, should I get a private dars in uh, private lessons in Arabic to improve my Arabic? He said, no. He said, read two pages of uh, Ibn al-Qayyim every day, and that's sufficient. And so I sort of took the advice, but... Basically, I was doing a lot of durus with him. We were learning what the Imam Malik, and he was teaching just, you know, Shar uh, Sunnah Imam Barbahari. He let me be the reader. All of these things, by the immersion in the Arabic, it helped me, even though I felt frustrated sometimes. We were doing Baluga Maram as well. You know, the, this immersion helped me to improve. And by listening, the, a lot of listening, listening to tapes, listening to the tapes of the ulama, and listening in durus, with the ulama because you saw how the, the students that were advanced, how they asked questions. You learn, Fadila to Sheikh, da 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 da, you know, asking questions and how the Arabs uh, use the language. So by the more uh, that you immerse yourself in that is going to be very helpful. So it just depends on your environment. Are you going to travel? Are you uh, going to be seeking knowledge in your country, in America, in the UK, in France, wherever you are, that you're stuck in the West and you can't go? You know, now there's so many opportunities. There's so many things, what I would say. There's so much information that the most important thing is you really get on a focused program. Because the more that you're focused and you, are on, you, you have a serious um uh, way of seeking the knowledge that you're you don't get distracted don't let other things distracted don't get caught up in who's talking about who and who's making tip d of who because you will not advance you'll be busy listening to that and you'll still be in the same state one two three years from now because you 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 wasted your time with kathar taqil waqal what the prophet sallallahu spoke against so very important get yourself on a program finish books if you start with Rasulullah uh, Thalatha, then finish it. Go from the beginning to the end and, and read it a lot on your own to get familiar with it. Uh, and if it's whatever, some other book, if you're reading a book, uh, you know, I, I would say 40 Hadith and Nawawi, read it from the beginning to the end and listen to lectures of students of knowledge that are known from Ahlul Sunnah that have, uh, have taught it and go through the whole thing. This is going to help give you your usul. You know, your usul doesn't get developed by just fatawa and cut and paste. The fatawa are beautiful. They help us with Messiah. They help us with uh, immense amount of knowledge. But you don't establish your foundation based on fatawa. Because what you see is a lot of Salafi youth over the years, especially those who didn't study, that all they did was get a bunch of cut and paste. Bin Baz said, Al-Albani said, Sheikh Mukbil said in this, so it, they don't know anything about the usul of those issues. They don't know that people before them of, of the Salaf and those later talked about those issues in depth or, uh, you know, they, they don't have an usul to go to. They don't know what the Quran says. They don't know what the Sunnah says, but they only know what Bin Baz said. And he, Bin Baz was a great imam. That doesn't take away from him. But what I'm saying when it comes to studying, you need to study the usul of those masail to learn your religion. That's what's going to make you closer to Allah, is learning the dalil. And that's why Imam Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab said, إِعْلَمْ رَحِيمَكَ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَيْنَ تَعَلَّمْ أَرْبَعَ مَسَائِلَ الْأُولَى الْعِلْمِ He said it's an obligation upon us to know four things, and the first is ilm. And then what did he say? What, what, what did he say ilm? Did he say ilm was called a sheikh so-and-so, or sheikh so-and-so? No. He said, Al-Ula al-Ilm, wa huwa ma'rafat Allah, wa ma'rafat al-Nabi, wa ma'rafat al-Din al-Islam bi'adillah. That it is knowing Allah, that it is knowing 
uh, the Prophet وسلم, and knowing the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. The textual proofs are not the fatawa. Textual proofs are not Majmu'a Fatawa, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Or here we have Imam Sa'di's Fatawa here. And we have uh, this and this. No. The Usul is coming from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So knowing and understanding those explanations and the tafsir and stuff like this, this is going to help your Usul and the Usul al-Itiqada Ahlu Sunnah from those books of the Salaf. That gives you your foundation. Then you know how to operate. And the fatawa and stuff, then you have a tesor, you have a better understanding. So I hope, I know this is a lot of information, but my point is, is you need a program. You need a program. And the benefit of going to places like the Islamic University in Medina and all and Islamic universities, wherever you go, is that they have a program. They have something you just fit right in. One of the things I found that was a shortcoming for me, because I didn't have the patience when I first went to Yemen. I can the magic was just too extreme for me as far as an environment. I wasn't necessarily cut out for that because I needed to get married. So it was hard to be in a place where there was no, I never saw women. It was just, it was just too much for me coming fresh out of America and no, you know, hyenas. I saw hyenas out there and, and it was just a little much for me, you know? So those brothers who were patient, they really excelled in their knowledge. Me, I had to leave and, and I went and other things and other ways of seeking knowledge. But what I found there for me, especially in that time, because that was 1997, there wasn't a, a established program for non Arab speakers. So we just grab somebody to teach you a little bit of Arabic here and there. Some people didn't really want to spend their time teaching. It was very difficult and patient. And I come from the West. I was, you know, I needed a, pro a program mapped out. The match got much better later after we left. You know, there was brothers, senior brothers that were teaching and teaching the Westerners and the Sheikh, you know, Sheikh Yahya and, and Sheikh Mukbil, uh, probably Sheikh Yahya at that time, uh, you know, began to establish teachers who could teach the Westerners. So my point is, is you need some program. So even if you're in that type of environment, you need a Sheikh, you need someone to guide you on what to study, how to study, give you a menhaj, a curriculum. And those are just some of the many thoughts I have about that. May Yudha the law will be khayr and yifakul fideen. Whatever Allah wants good for a person, he gives them understanding of the religion. And may Allah bless you with fit fideen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.